Hey guys, how's it going? We're back with another video, uh, but today it's going to be more specifically about my camera settings and wh why I use them. I get a lot of questions every day on my YouTube comments and Twitch streams about why I use the camera settings I do and why I have the stiffness. And I'm going to dive into that today and explain all my settings and why I use them specifically for competitive play. I started playing Rocket League in February 2016, which is almost three years from now. and. Uh, I noticed that I was improving pretty fast, but my camera settings were still default for the first uh, few weeks until I noticed that you could change them. And so when I looked into all the different settings, I picked the ones that I thought were the best for the game and awareness and everything like that, and I haven't changed them since. So here we are, default Rocket League, full quality settings, default camera. This is how you're put into the game for the first time. And you may just drive around and think, oh, this is this is kind of cool, you know. I'm gonna play like this. There's lots of uh, lots of flashy colors. The camera's nice and close. Your car swivels around when you're moving the uh, the camera. And you know, you might play like this for a while. Think you're you're doing well. You're getting good touches. Not that one. But you want to start working on improving and getting more consistent with everything that you do. And so now we jump into the menu. So we open up the options menu here and we've got seven tabs to our disposal. But the most important one for today is camera. And you're sitting here with the default preset. You've got camera shake, field of view, distance, height, angle, stiffness, swivel speed, transition speed, and inverse swivel. So to start at the top, we've got camera shake. And camera shake is when you touch the ball or jump, you can see that there's a bit of a, a vibration on the screen, which causes a bit of a a lack of focus in the gameplay. I know most of you that have reached probably above gold or so have already turned this off as they know it does not help their gameplay at all. Well, let's move into field of view. We start at 90 degrees field of view, which is the default, but most pro players or competitive players sit at 105 to 110. And you can already see a world of a difference in the awareness on your screen how much space you have to look around the ball when you have the ball near you, and how much space around your car you have when the ball's on top of your car. To put it into perspective, just look at how much the ball grows on the screen as you approach 90 degrees. And when I unpause, the ball is now covering the whole net. You can't see any of the players that are sitting in the net and where they're defending, and you don't know where your teammates are or who's coming around the corners of the field. You can see as you drive around and try to maneuver the ball, you have very little room to see around the field in comparison to the fact that when you have the ball on your, your car like this with 110 degrees, look how much room you have to look around. So when I was settling on a field of view, I noticed that 110 was better, so I chose that. Now let's move on to distance. Distance is an interesting one because it actually combines with stiffness, which I'll get into later. But for the, the matter of dealing with distance at the moment, Distance pulls the camera at a static distance from the back of your car, horizontally. So you can see that when you when you bring it back in, it gets closer and closer to the back of your car, but I'm still above the car because of my height at 100. So I'm just pulling back as I go further back. So for me, I use a distance of 300, but like I said, stiffness is tied together with distance. And so for me, my stiffness is much higher than this, and with a distance of 300 and a stiffness of 0.3, you can notice that as you speed up, you move further away from the camera. So at the moment, I would say that this is not a good distance for this stiffness, but let's move further down into the, the settings to figure out why I chose them. So like I said, distance is all about the horizontal distance of the camera from the car. Meanwhile, height is the vertical distance from the camera to the car. Now you get to choose between 40 and 200 distance above the car. Now you'll notice that when I'm at 200 height, I'm pretty far above the the car here. And it's it starts to become very difficult to understand where I am underneath the ball because you don't have that visibility. So when you're on the wall like this, you can't really get the proper touches underneath and you start to lose control. 200 height does have a very good advantage for 1v1 situations as you can see almost entirely over the ball. You could see the player challenging on the other side which is good, but you need to balance everything. That's the whole point of camera settings. So for that reason, I wouldn't use 200, obviously. But let's go to the opposite side, 40 degrees now. So now we're nice and positioned below the ball with the camera, but you can see that we actually start to lose a little bit of detail and information. Uh, we don't really know where we are underneath the ball. The ball indicator on the ground helps, 
but it's very difficult to understand exactly where you're positioned for your flicks. So with that in mind, we know that the proper answer is somewhere in the middle of all these settings, which is a good thing. We know that we have this range of where we don't want to be and we don't want to be. So we know that the proper numbers are somewhere in, in between here. And for me, I use 130. So with 130 height, you can notice that I have some visibility of my front wheels, which now tells me where I am positioned on the ball indicator in the front. That's really important. So we've got a happy balance of looking above the ball, looking under the ball, and looking with the car on the bottom of the field to know where we are positioned on the ball. I can, I can find the middle of the ball pretty easily. Now angle is a very interesting setting that also sort of affects the height, distance, and stiffness all together in one. Even the field of view a bit too. Angle has to do with the number of degrees that your camera is tilted from the center of the axis. So with zero degrees angle, we've now centered the camera with the grid, like the 3D grid that's used in the game. And this flattens the camera and you lose that verticality a little bit. On the other hand, negative 15 degrees gives you that vertical motion. But once again, we're starting to lose information of the front of the car. So we want to have that happy medium once again. It's all about happy mediums in camera settings. So for me, I use negative four angle. Um, this is really up to you and how you feel, but I would say any anywhere between negative three and negative six is probably a good number to use. You can notice how much of a drastic difference there is between negative six and negative three here. A good way to think of it is the more you change the angle this way, the more vertical information you lose on the top of the screen rather than the bottom screen. You can notice that as you're moving the camera angle, you're not losing too much information on the floor, but you lose a lot more information on the ceiling. So for that reason alone, I use negative four and not zero or further down on the angles because I don't want to lose that vertical information, but I also don't want to lose the dynamic feel of the tilt on the camera looking down at the car slightly. So the last setting here is stiffness, which is arguably the most important setting in the entire game, and I'll explain why. So stiffness has to do with how rigid the camera follows your car, as it says in the bottom there, but that doesn't really explain the full effect that it has on all of the other settings. For the point of demonstration, let's put it down to 0, 0.0 and see what happens with the stiffness, and I'll explain what it does entirely. So stiffness actually has four different effects, and I'll go into the order of which ones are the most noticeable. The first most noticeable is when you drive forward, and the car starts to move further and further away from your screen until you go supersonic, and then you're at a constant distance. And then when you start to slow down, you start to come back into the position that you're set at your camera settings. Number two is turning and drifting. You'll notice that when I drift, I start to move off the center of the camera and it really takes a while at 0, 0.00 to lock yourself back into the center of the screen. I'd say that the third most noticeable is the flips, if not the most noticeable. When you flip to the side, you can notice that the camera takes a while to follow you around and you start to lose control of where you are on, on your camera. And for the least noticeable, vertical jumping and going up and down the walls. And you'll notice that when I'm going up and down the walls, my car moves away from the center of the screen and moves up and down. But that only tends to happen when you're in car cam. Like I said, it's not as noticeable when you're in the ball cam here because of the way that it follows the ball instead of your car. And what I just said there is the most important part. You're losing a sense of your car's positioning depending on what view you're using. At least for me, I would say that it's a lot more difficult to understand exactly where you are positioned on the field when you have to constantly change the position of your car on the screen and not focus on other things like boost pads on the floor and cars on the field. Now let's change it all the way up to one, like I use, and this is now my full settings except for swivel speed, which isn't that important, I'll explain later. And here are my settings. So I'm in the center of the screen at all times. You can notice that even when I'm off the wall, it doesn't change too much, it has to adjust a bit. Transitioning is a lot cleaner now on the walls. You can see that my car stays locked in my position on my screen. I'm able to turn back to the ball, understand where it is in the field, get back to my car. Overall, it's just a very clean look to the camera. You can, you can get a really good gauge of where you are on the field, your positioning on the ball. So the key takeaway from the stiffness side of things is that my center of mass on my camera with stiffness of one is always in the same spot no matter what's happening. And that's really important for me to understand exactly where I am on the field in comparison to the ball and all the other players. I'm able to understand exactly where I am. I don't need to focus on the positioning of my car on the camera. It's all about a static position on the camera. And that allows me to focus more on my touches and rather than how I'm moving my car around or maneuvering. Just to compare side by side, Notice that on the right, 
We have a lot more consistency in the positioning, like I said. You have the center mass staying together, and on the left side, you have a lot more swivel on the actions as you're moving around in the screen, which can start to cause confusion in the air where you're positioning. So let's quickly move on to swivel speed. I just use 3.6, it's not a really big deal. That's just basically how fast you move your analog stick and it moves on the screen. That number is really up to you. It doesn't really matter how fast you move, as long as you can move to the side really quickly so you can check for your opponents and teammates. Now transition speed, I keep at one. I don't think it's important to move up any faster. Transition speed basically controls how fast you transition between the two different cameras. So if you use two, it switches immediately, which can be good, but you start to lose information on the transition of the field, but I just keep it to one. An invert swivel has to do with vertical movement, so I'm pushing up to go look down right now and then down to look up. That's just because I played a lot of airplane games <laughs> when I was a younger kid, so I kept it that way. I always like using down to look up. And so now that we went through all the settings and I've shown you why stiffness one is important for me, I'm gonna go back to distance because I didn't really cover it too well because of the fact that stiffness has a really heavy part in why you use a certain distance. So now with a, a stiffness of 1, you can notice that the back of my wheels are always at the same distance from the back of the, the screen. If I was to reduce the distance, you can see how quickly I start to lose information behind my car. Just at a distance of 240, the wheels are almost at the bottom of the screen. And same thing when I move the distance to 400, I start to lose that understanding of my car because of how small it is on the screen. So at 300 distance, which I think is a perfect balance for my settings, I have my car at about one quarter of the screen at the bottom, which gives me a one eighth below the car. And then I have three quarters of the screen above me to see the rest of the field, which gives me a view of the, the field in its entirety, which is perfect for competitive play. So that about covers it for camera settings and why I use the ones that I do. But let's just quickly go into the reason why I use the video settings that I do. So for me, I use every single setting all the way off except for transparent goalposts even anti-aliasing. There's a few though that are very important to turn off. Anti-aliasing is one of them, bloom is another one, and high quality shaders, and all of these details. I know that a lot of these cause a lot of input lag, so I want to have the lowest possible so that my gameplay is as smooth as possible. Maximum FPS is a very interesting one, and there's a reason why I use 245 instead of 250, but let me first explain what FPS is for Rocket League. It's not only how many frames are displaying on your screen, but it's actually how many times the game calculates your inputs. Basically, the game calculates my inputs 245 times a second. There's a reason why I don't use 250, and it might not be a problem anymore, but now that I've kept it to 245, I like to keep it consistent. The game used to have problems with maximum FPS, and it would cause frame lags or stutters, so I dropped it to 245 to try and balance it. And I have a monitor that's 240 Hz, so I want to make sure that's above 240. Even if you have a lower Hz monitor, it's actually important to increase this FPS to a point that your computer can handle. So even if you have a 60 Hz monitor, you might want to increase the maximum FPS to something like 240 if you can, because it will calculate your inputs four times more in a second. Now the final settings I'll just brush over really quickly. Uh, interface scale just changes the size of the menus, nothing to do with the game. Display scale has to do with how small the boost is on your screen and the scoreboard. And nameplate scale is how big the nameplates are above cars. The default is 100, but I like to use 150. It makes the size of the nameplates a little bit bigger and easier to see from across the screen. As far as nameplate mode goes, I would say that always visible is very important to know where cars are. Sometimes default can make it a little bit difficult to find cars on the field. As for match notifications, make sure you have time updates only. Uh, it's sometimes you can get those scores on your screen that aren't really that important and it can distract you from the gameplay. And I just have force default colors on just in case someone has ridiculous colors. And uh, I have ball arrow on but no ball cam indicator. And ball cam indicator is just the thing in the bottom left corner there that shows you that you have ball cam on. But you can notice that when you have ball cam off you have that arrow that helps you understand which one you're in. I would make sure that you at least have ball arrow on because it is important when you're not using ball cam to see where the ball is. But if you want to use ball cam indicator that is totally fine as well. Alright, that about sums it up for camera settings and visual settings. I'll do another video at some point about my controls and the settings that you see here on the screen. I think that they require a little bit more detail to explain them fully, so I'll do a separate video for that. If you enjoyed this guide on how to choose camera settings and why I chose mine for competitive play, or you enjoy my other videos, please feel free to subscribe. I uh, try to do daily content. Uh, I'm trying to put more quality into the videos, so sometimes it doesn't really come out daily, but I do my best. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.